Hello, Maker Lab people. Uh, welcome to this tutorial series. Uh, my name is Russell. I'm an ECE master's student, um, be graduating this year. Um, so this is a tutorial series on how to do CAD or computer aided design, basically a shorthand for 3D modeling. Um, so I think CAD's really cool. I've been doing it for nearly a decade now. Um, and particularly if you're coming here through Nitty's class, you'll probably have heard that CAD essentially enables all kinds of really cool digital manufacturing, di digital fabrication technology. So 3D printing, laser cutting, um, et cetera. Um, so when, it can be a little intimidating at first, but I've found that you know the concepts, once you really get them, they, they're pretty easy to scale up and then really understand how to do really awesome, really cool things with them. So hopefully this first video in this whole series will, will get you to a point where you feel comfortable working with 3D geometry um, and sort of making models, taking shapes out of your head and turning them into physical objects. Um, I think that's really cool. <laughs> uh, I'm really into it. Um, so hopefully you do too. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get there together. Um, so there's all kinds of CAD software out there. Uh, my favorite, uh, it's called Onshape. Um, I describe it as sort of the Google Docs of CAD. Um, essentially what it is, is sort of a, it's a browser-based platform, basically gives you professional quality tools and functionality for free. Um, you know, you lose some functionality not paying for it, but it's it's way better than I think most other software out there and you get it for, for free. Um, so it'll be best if you do this tutorial by following along. So if you haven't already, go make an Onshape account, uh, just the word on shape. Um, and then yeah, so pause this, come back with the account, log in. And uh, yeah, after you've done that, Feel free to pause, rewind. This stuff can be a little like, you know, go back and look what I'm doing. I'm gonna to try to go slow, make sure it's understandable for everybody. Um, not, not expecting you to have any experience with this coming in. So let me share my Onshape real quick. Yeah, so this is the home screen. Your, your, uh, your Onshape won't have all this stuff, but this is sort of the list of documents. Basically Onshape works by, you, you make a document. Um, and within that document, you, you can do all kinds of fancy stuff. I'll go into the more advanced functionality of that. Um, in a later thing if people want me to. But to start out with, on your blank screen, you go over to this create button here. Um, you click create and you wanna create a document. Um, this is just sort of the basic blank screen and call it, I'm gonna call it Lego brick tutorial. Okay, so this makes a, what's called a workspace, which is basically in on-shape terms, the white paper of, you know, if you're drawing, if you're drawing a 2D drawing, this is your 3D drawing space. Um, so first thing here, let's, let's just talk about how to move this around. Uh, I, I really recommend that you work with a mouse here, but you can, you can not do that if you want, you know, trackpads just gonna be a little harder. Um, so before we get to do anything, um, let's just talk about how to actually look at this space. Um, so first of all, there's basically two, well, three, three main controls for how to move around this. So first of all, take your mouse and try right-clicking and dragging. Uh, if I do that, you can see I'm right-clicking and dragging right now, and that rotates the space. If you can imagine that, you know, sort of origin there as an object, the object is rotating as I am still holding right-click and rotating the whole thing. Um, so you can do, just, just practice this, you know, move it around, do all, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, so, if you get into a crazy spot, which you can almost do, look at my mouse up on the top right, this cube is called the navigation cube. If you get lost, you don't know where you're looking, you can click on one of these and it'll zoom to sort of look at a face of this. This origin is split up with three different planes, the top plane, looking at it from the top, the front plane, looking at it from the front, and the, you know, the right plane, the side plane, looking at it from the right here. Um, the other, the next tool, the middle mouse button. So if you're on a mouse, press the, click with the, the scroll wheel um, and that'll pan. That lets you basically grab the object that you're looking at or the grab the space and move it without turning. So this is useful to sort of just you know, move stuff around obviously. Um, so I, I would recommend honestly, just looking at this, this sort of three plane object, you know, pause the video and just practice this a little bit, get used to sort of how to look at, you know, practice transitioning right plane to front plane to top plane but then that's, that's with the right mouse button to rotate um, and then zooming in and out by scrolling with the scroll wheel and then pressing the scroll wheel to pan back and forth. Um, and then, you know, zoom back to the sort of to the top there. Um, so try that a little bit um, until you feel like you're comfortable sort of understanding what, what those buttons do because that's, that's important to sort of not feel like you're gonna get lost while you're looking at what you're, what you're working at. 
Um, so once you feel like you get the sort of right mouse button, pan, et cetera, tools there, that's how you move around this space. The left mouse button is for selecting things. Um, so if I want to click on a plane, the left mouse button will click on the top plane, and that's now selected. Um, you can keep clicking on things. I want to also select the front plane, the right plane. Sort of adds to your selection, all the things you're selecting. Um, it's like selecting emails. If you want to get rid of everything, click on white space. Now nothing, now nothing is selected. So um, this, this space you're looking at right here, as I was saying before, is basically just your 3D blank paper. Um, this is like a white piece of paper extended into 3D. Um, in that same metaphor, I would say that CAD, the main conceptual leap here is that 3D modeling CAD is just drawing in 2D and then pulling that drawing into a third dimension. We'll get into that into, in a sec. But the, the fundamental concept is that if you want to have a 3D object, first you draw its cross section in 2D, and then we're going to pull it up into the third dimension. So what does that look like? First of all, in 2D, in, 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 in CAD, the, the sort of two-dimensional drawing is called sketching. So you, up on the top left here, you, the sketch tool, this is sort of your most important tool. You're going to click sketch, make a new sketch, and then we want to want to click the plane that we want to sketch on. So I want to pull something out of the ground. So I'm going to sketch on the top plane, looking looking top down. So now we're in this sketch view, uh, denoted by sort of sketch one over here in this little menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the navigation cube again, click on top, um, and zoom in on the origin here. Um, oh, one quick note. So okay, sorry. So um, we're going to be working with a Lego brick today. I just, I just wanted to sort of if we want to talk about uh, drawing in 2D, what, what do we want to draw? Um, so I've, I've gone and I've pulled up the specifications for a Lego brick. Um, this is sort of like what Lego will put out as you know its drawing of what a Lego brick means. And the, there's all kinds of numbers here. What, what do these numbers mean? We'll go, go into that in a sec. Um, for instance, um, each of the nubs on top of a standard Lego brick, its diameter is 4.8. 4.8 what? Um, that's not specified here, but I'm just going to tell you it's 4.8 millimeters. Um, so your default in your document over here, let's go back to Onshade, is probably not millimeters. Um, so one thing we want to do, we want to just click on this menu button up here to just, this can make our lives easier. Um, menu button, workspace units, default unit, just change that from inch to millimeter. Um, that's going to make working with this particular source drawing easier. Um, so. Now that we're in millimeters, um, this drawing makes a little more sense. So if you can think about it, this is a top-down view of a Lego brick, sort of a very familiar shape. And this is the right side view of a, of a Lego brick. Again, familiar shape. Um, so what this is telling us, if we want to pull the Lego brick from the ground up, the ground being this bottom surface here, we want to pull the Lego brick out of the ground. What is the, diam what is this, the uh, dimensions of this rectangle that we want to start pulling out of the ground? Um, this drawing is telling us that the long side is 31.8 millimeters and the short side is 15.8 millimeters. So we want to be pulling a rectangle of that shape out of the ground. So back over to on shape. How do we make a rectangle that is 31.8 millimeters by 15.8 millimeters? So you're a little constrained in, in CAD. Um, we were in our sketch, we're in our sketch menu here. Um, sorry, I actually accidentally exited it. Um, so to get back into it, you double click there and you, you enter into the sketch. So when, when this menu is open, you're in the sketch. So this opens up the whole toolbar of sketch tools. You don't have to, you don't have to know what all these are yet, but I'll, I'll sort of start introducing them. What you want to do to draw a rectangle, click on this rectangle icon here. And you want to click on this center point. We call this the origin. Click once and then click again. And then to finish the rectangle, click on, on sorry, hit, hit escape. Um, so this is a rectangle. We don't know what size this rectangle is, but it's you just got this is now a rectangle in 2D space. Here I'm using the right mouse button again to move around. You can see that this is a flat rectangle in a 3D space. So we want this thing to be a very specific size because a Lego brick doesn't really make sense if it's not a very specific size. So in uh, in, a, in the sketch mode, what we want to do is dimension things, force things to be a certain dimension. So this is what we do here to, to make things a certain size, click on this dimension tool. This basically sets us, gives us the ability to constrain objects to be a very specific size. So with the dimension tool, you click on one edge and you click on the opposing edge that you want to be a certain distance apart, click on both and then click elsewhere. 
And this will open up a menu that lets you type in, just type, I want this long edge to be 31.8 millimeters. And I should type in 31.8 and hit enter. So that automatically shrinks that to be 31.8 millimeters. And then we're still in the dimension tool and we know we want the short side to be 15.8 millimeters. So again, click on a side, click on a side, move the number and click where we want the number to sit and type in the number we want, 15.8, enter. So now this rectangle, remember we wanted it, we wanted it 15.8 by 31.8 is the size of this rectangle here. This is what we're pulling out of the ground. This is our first sketch. So to get out of the sketch, we, we click the green, the green check mark. Um, and then we, remember I said, you want to pull this into 3D. So we click on the thing we want to pull. And then this tool over here uh, up on the top left, this is your other main tool, extrude. Think of the extrude tool as the thing that you take a sketch and make it 3D with. So I usually think of it as pulling. You can also use it for pushing, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so once you've got a 2D drawing, you extrude it, you pull it into 3D. Click on the extrude tool. This opens a new extrude. Basically, it's, this, is, this is an operation acting on your 2D drawing. And th so this is now moving, this is defaults to 25 uh, millimeters. It's pulling it by 25 millimeters. So we just change this number here. Um, if we remember, if you look at the drawing again, this vertical dimension is 9.6 millimeters. So we want to change this dimension, make it 9.6, enter. And that's now the right size for a Lego brick. Um, we have taken this drawing and it's the right size. Um, so yeah, if you're not here, feel free to pause, go back, uh, watch what I just did. Um, but yeah, when, we just want to get to this point where we have the Lego brick exactly as it's drawn in the Lego company specifications. This will allow us to add more geometry to this sort of shell. That, so we'll, we'll have a Lego brick that actually interfaces with other Lego bricks, which is the goal. So next steps. Um, now that we have our sort of body of the Lego brick, we want to add these eight nubs. So again, same concept. We want to pull these out of the surface where they come from. Um, so what we're going to do, same process again. We're going to sketch on the top of the Lego brick. Remember this tool up here, sketch. Enter the sketch menu and click on the thing we want to pull objects out of. So now this has made a new sketch. And you can see this, this rectangle here is now on the plane of the top of this. So we're going to, we're, this is going to allow us to draw things here that we can then pull into 3D space. Um, OK, so if we remember correctly, um, we have eight nubs we want to put on this surface. Um, let's just start with one. So what do we know about this, about, about each of these nubs? This drawing is telling us this little, this arrow here says that this, each circle is 4.8 millimeters in diameter. Let's start with the bottom left one. This drawing is telling us this line here is we're 3.9 millimeters away from the bottom edge of the brick. And again, these lines here, 3.9 millimeters away from the left side of this brick. So let's move into the, if we're in the sketch tool over here, the tool we want to use to draw a circle is this, this tool here, it looks like a circle. So we click on this tool and it doesn't matter where we click, but we click once and click again to define the circle. And before we click again, we can type in, we know we want it to be 4.8 millimeters, enter. And this will automatically make a, uh, a dimension and, to, and to, to exit out of that tool, you hit escape. So this is, this is already, the correct size that this this is 4.8 millimeters in diameter but it's not in the right spot that we want this to be this doesn't look like correct like a lego brick so we got again we go back to our dimension tool which forces things to be a certain distance apart click on this and we want the center of this circle to be 3.9 millimeters from the edge click on the center click on the side and then click again to open the, the menu type in our dimension 3.9 enter and that'll force it to be 3.9 millimeters from that side now let's do that again for the other side. Center, side, click over here, 3.9 millimeters, enter. There we go. So now this one, we have one nub already in the right spot. Um, so for sketching in general, you can, you can always keep doing this. You can sort of, if, if I wanted to, I could, you know, keep doing that. You know, I want another circle that's 4.8. Don't, don't do this. I'll show you a, a better way in a minute. I could sort of manually define all of these. Um, if we go back to the dimensions, the next nub is 8.0 millimeters here, and it's still 3.9 millimeters from this edge here. So I could do this manually again. I could use my dimension tool. These centers need to be eight millimeters apart. Um, and this center needs to be 3.9 millimeters from the edge.
this is not a very efficient way to do this. Um, and so I'm going to use control Z to undo that second circle that I just did. Um, but if you want to, totally feel free and do, do the extra work to sort of do that manually, defining all those dimensions. Um, but, uh, you know, Onshape provides us with tools to make this work a little bit easier. Um, so in a sketch, we have what's called a linear pattern. This allows us to take a shape and just repeat it along an axis, uh, a certain interval apart each time. Um, so I'm going to click on the linear pattern tool, and I want to repeat this circle eight times. So I'm going to click on this. And it's going to start making repetitions of this. So I'm going to scroll wheel to move out and, and use my pan tool, clicking on the mouse wheel to move a little bit. So what this is doing, this looks more complicated than I think it is. This axis, it's it's telling us it's going to make three repetitions of this circle in this direction, and it's telling us up here it's going to make one repetition of the circle in this direction. So we need two repetitions and four repetitions. So I'm going to change this number to two, and it's going to add a whole another series of these. And we need four in this direction to, to round out our eight. So now we have eight circles, but they're spaced way too far apart. How do we change that? The pattern tool has this dimension. This is a dimension already built into the tool. And I want to change the repeating interval to eight millimeters. Uh, actually, to, to put it in the other direction, I'm going to say negative eight. It's going to flip it all the way over. Um, and then this next dimension, I want it to also be eight millimeters apart. And that snaps right into place. And then I click elsewhere, and our eight circles are done. So this is the full geometry um, of these nubs on top of the Lego brick. So as a shortcut, um, instead of exiting this sketch, you, you exit a tool by hitting this green check. I'm going to, while I'm still in the sketch, click on the extrude tool to select all of it, and it's going to pull these nubs out. So the same thing, I wanted to find that these are pulled out by 1.8 millimeters. Type this in, enter, and green check to ex exit the tool. And we have our Lego brick. Um, so we've fully defined this. This Lego brick is sort of the shell of something that will actually click into regular bricks. This is our exact geometry. Um, you could already print this if you want. Um, but this is just sort of the first basic tutorial. I'm going to come back do more videos on printing and on more advanced geometry. So for now, um, I'm just going to say thumbs up. Uh, feel free to pause, rewind, go back, make this shape. And stay tuned for the next video.